Number four, balance the following equations. And then we have letter G in this pack. Uh, we have Al solid, so aluminum solid, plus sulfuric acid, H2SO4, aqueous, plus aluminum sulfate, Al2SO43, and then hydrogen gas. Okay, first thing I like to do is I'm just going to rewrite it because I just want to have a little bit more room here. So Al plus H2SO4 will yield me Al2 SO43 and then plus H2. Okay, remember guys, when you're balancing, does anybody care about the states? No, nobody cares about the states. So I don't care that this is a solid or aqueous or a solid or a gas. Nobody cares. And yeah, you could disregard that. Pretend that those aren't even there. You do not need them to balance the equation. The next thing we like to do is we like to make that, that chart, right? Of reactants and products. Reactants are always on the left side. It's the left elements of the yield sign. And the products are always on the right side. Now, remember that we like to list the individual elements of the... Um, the compounds here. And I keep saying remember because we've done tons of problems like this, right? We're on 4G. So if you want, there's a playlist, Balancing Chemical Equations. Uh, it's, it's at the end screen of this video uh, that you can click, okay? So you'll see all of our balance equation videos. So that's, that's that. But now continuing on. We like to write our individual elements here. However, I'm going to try something else. And you could also visit a 4E. Hold on. I have to do I have to do my alphabet. A, B, C, D, F, G, E, F. Yeah, so 4F, the one right before this. Uh, we did the same exact thing where we did a little bit different. So check out 4F if you want to see that. But we can group individual elements, but we can also group polyatomics. So this comes from memorizing what your polyatomics are. That was like chapter two or something in your textbook. Polyatomics are like NO3, nitrate, nitrite, a phosphate. But here, if I'm scanning this, I see a SO4. That is a polyatomic. SO4 is a sulfate. Right, it has a negative two charge. So I see it on the reactant side and I see it on the product side. If you see the same polyatomic on the left and the right, you will group the polyatomic together. Don't try to separate it into sulfur and oxygen. Just try to group it as the sulfate, SO4. So let's write down what we got going on. We have an aluminum, we have a hydrogen, and now I'm grouping the whole sulfate. I'm not saying just SO because the polyatomic is sulfate, SO4. And then you, we know that whatever we do on this side, we have to do on the other side. So Al, H, and SO4. Let's write down how many we have of aluminum and hydrogen first, and then we'll get to the sulfates. So we got aluminum all by its lonesome here. There's no number here, right? So there's a one. Do I have one aluminum? H2, I have two hydrogens. And now, if I'm looking at my sulfate, right, this whole thing, this isn't in parentheses, right? This isn't like SO4-5 or SO4-2. So how many would I have? What's the secret number down here? Oh, it's a, it's a one, right? So I have one whole sulfate molecule. And now let's do the same thing for the other side. I have Al2, so I have two aluminums. Let's skip down to the hydrogens. I have two Hs. And now how many sulfates do I have? This whole thing now is branched, and it's telling me that I have three of them. Right? There's a three here. So I have three of these. Now I must balance. Looks like the hydrogens are good, but the aluminum and the sulfate need to be balanced. So here's another trick. Which one should I try to attempt to balance first? You should always try to balance the ones that are locked into compounds first. 
and not by itself. Because at the end of the day, if I need to balance aluminum, I could just add the number on to here because it's not being affected by any other element. So in this case, the AL is being hooked up by just itself, but on the product side, it's bound to Al2SO43. The sulfate that I have to balance on the reactant side, it's bound up by H2SO4. And then on the other side, it's the Al2SO43 compound. I will balance the sulfates first because this one, the aluminum, is just by itself on this side. So try to balance the elements that are with compounds on both sides first. That's just a trick. So I have one sulfate here. Is there any number that I can multiply by one to get to three? Right? Yeah. One times three. That number that you that you timesing by is the number that goes in front of the compound. So I know that I have to put a three here, but you gotta be fair. You have to multiply by all of the elements or the polyatomics. So just like we saw three sulfates, right? Three sulfates. I know that this number is now a three, but the hydrogens are going to change. I have three times two is now six. But I got my sulfates to be good, so let's just keep moving. But now who am I going to balance first? I got aluminum here, one and two, and I got a hydrogen, six and two. On the reactant side, the hydrogen is being bound by H2SO4. And on the product side, it's just by itself, it's H2. Both of these have... Uh, one that's by themselves. So does it really matter who you balance first? Absolutely not. Let's start from the top and work our way down. I want to try to balance aluminum. I have one. One times what will get me two? Oh, one times two. That number is the number that goes in front. So I'm going to put a two here. So now I have two aluminum and that checks. Now let's just do the same thing for the hydrogen. Is there any number that I could multiply by 2 to get to 6? Yeah, right? 2 times 3. And that number is what goes in front of the element that you want to ba uh, balance. So there's going to be a 3 here. And that will get me 2 times 3 is 6. And now you're all balanced. And now the equation's balanced. So you need 2 aluminums plus 3 H2SO4s. And when that happens, you are able to get one of these. Anytime that there's no coefficient, there's always a one. And then plus three H2s. And that's the end. Not bad. But it's introducing you to the idea that you can group together polyatomics and not just elements. Of course, you could have listed, you know, S and O, but that's, that's too much. Try to group your polyatomics. The balancing will work much quicker that way. All right? So... Let me know in the comments what you think. What do you think about this chart idea? And if you want more practice, we got tons more practice coming your way with balancing. So uh, you could just click the uh, the playlist button. I think it's on the screen. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys all in the next lesson. I hope you have an awesome day and I hope you're studying hard for your tests and exams and good luck on your tests and exams. All right. Um, talk to you later. Bye-bye.